They are perhaps one of any Navy's most renowned assets. As amphibious troops, we bridge that gap from, from the sea to the land. They are mobile, amphibious and highly trained. It is a fighting force that is able to land in places where other conventional warfare cannot be handled. They are known under various pseudonyms, devil dogs, bootnecks, black devils, fujos and many more. É importante confiar uns nos outros. Só a confiança nos traz o sucesso para a missão. They are deployable by sea and by air and able to operate on different terrains under all weather conditions. Worden van de woestijn tot in de bergen kunnen wij ingezet worden en overal waar mensen zijn kunnen zich conflicten ontwikkelen. They are the Marines. The unforgiving fjords and mountains of Norway, where temperatures reach minus 35 degrees Celsius, is for many a landscape to be feared and avoided. But for the UK's Royal Marine Commandos, it presents an ideal training ground. The Royal Marines are Arctic specialists, so we're out here every winter honing these skills and uh, there's a huge coastline up in Norway, so being able to operate from the boats adds so much to what we can do on the land. The relationship between Norway and the Royal Marines stretches back to World War II, when British commandos orchestrated a series of raids on the Nazi-occupied Norwegian coast. The Royal Marines started as the, the infantry of the Navy and then developed quite a lot through World War II, taking on that commando aspect, and that's the, the legacy of the Royal Marines. Norway and the United Kingdom are now close NATO allies. For this group of commandos, the freezing conditions on the Norwegian coastline presents a challenging opportunity to conduct drills in their orcs or offshore raiding craft. So the orc is our jet boat and we've got two variants. We've got the troop carrying variant, which can take six people and deliver them onto a beach. And then we've also got the, the fire support variant. And that's our kind of protection while we're out in the water. But in places and conditions like these, it wouldn't just be the enemy that they'd have to contend with. The temperature and the weather, obviously the biggest challenge out here, uh, especially out on the water, because we've got the wind chill, as well as obviously the water that freezes instantly as well. And if we're heading off down the fjord at the boat group at like 30 knots into a 30 knot wind, it can quickly become down to minus 60 plus. So we've got to take that into consideration as well. Some 1,700 kilometres away from the icy conditions in the Norwegian Arctic, the rugged cliffs and intricate bays of the Scottish coast present a different challenge altogether. For these Dutch Marines, training here enables them to practice tactical insertions and extractions in different conditions than they might find back home. Ons motto, qua patent orbe, zo wijd de wereld strekt, overal ter wereld moeten wij ingezet kunnen worden onder wat voor omstandigheden, terrein of weer dan ook. First they're inserted via helicopter. Then they must make their way through the Scottish marshland. To a beach extraction point, where a landing craft will take them back to their ship. Met iedere operatie die je voert zijn er altijd gevaren die om de hoek kunnen kijken. Simpele gevaren zoals een veranderende sea state die ervoor zorgt dat het debarkeren van een kleine landingsvaartuig het bemoeilijk maakt. Daarnaast, je gaat simpelweg een vijandelijk gebied in vanuit een bootje. De vijand kan je van ver af aanzien komen. Dat kan je zeer kwetsbaar maken. But on this exercise, the Dutch aren't alone. In a separate amphibious insertion, they're working alongside Marines from Germany. Wij zullen zelf als kleine korps binnen Nederland niet tot alle mogelijkheden kunnen beschikken wanneer wij willen oefenen, maar op het moment dat wij kunnen samenwerken met de Amerikanen, met de Duitsers die meer of andere voertuigen dan wij gebruiken, kunnen wij alleen maar eigenlijk onze bereikheid in de wereld vergroten. Dus ik denk dat dat zeker wel een belangrijk aspect is om om samen te werken in de NAVO. Training exercises like this one allow Marines from different NATO nations to work together, learning each other's techniques and practices. And this kind of cooperation can be found all over the Alliance. 
NATO allies often host one another to maximise training potential. Here in Lithuania, the winding rivers and their dense tree lines present an opportunity for these Portuguese marines to practice river-based amphibious landings. Sim, com os fuzileiros da Marinha Portuguesa conduzem uma operação anfíbia. Na fase 1, verificamos todo o material, equipamento, fazemos a camuflagem adequada ao meio ambiente. Fase 2. Nesta fase, iremos fazer a projeção pelos meios de bote Zebro 3 do Corpo de Fuzileiros. Fase 3. Os elementos do reconhecimento irão ser projetados por meios de subsuperfície, garantindo assim a sua aproximação até à praia de desembarque. Fase 4. Nesta fase, é crucial que os elementos consigam garantir a segurança da praia, por forma a poder mandar avançar os elementos do grupo de assalto. Daqui Recon, praia reconhecida, segura e pronta para a força de desembarque. Escuto. Fase 5. O grupo de assalto prepara-se e nos botes Zebo 3 irá efetuar um desembarque anfíbio. Fase 6. Nesta fase, todos os elementos movimentam-se para o objetivo por forma a garantir um deslocamento até a área do objetivo. Um raio de anfíbio requer surpresa até o último momento. Por isso, este tipo de ação é curto, cirúrgico e conciso. The biggest contributor to NATO's marine capability, with almost 180,000 active personnel, is the United States Marine Corps. The Allied uh, Marine community, we share a common heritage and history uh, as soldiers of the sea. We're accustomed to having to be ready to pick up and move uh, to a crisis area at a moment's notice in order to meet and accomplish the mission. Training in European countries with European Marines strengthens the bond between the Marine forces from different continents and ensures that if a crisis was to strike, they would be able to work together. We've been here since 1980, so there's a legacy and history of cooperation with our allies in the area. I'd say the best part of my job and then the best days are when I get to either sit down with or work remotely with Marine and Naval infantry across uh, Europe. And in a traditionally male-dominated branch of the military, the United States, in 2016, opened up combat roles in the Marine Corps to women. I myself am joined by a myriad of other females here in roles such as logistics, flight controllers, engineer, female artillery officer here. That's just the officer side of things. On the enlisted side of things, I have female truck operators, boat operators. Having more females to look up to as role models has been extremely empowering. It takes a special type of person to become a Marine. What makes the Royal Marine special is the guys that are in it, the making things happen, the, the intelligent Marine who can think for himself and apply himself in a tough environment like this. A spirit of togetherness and camaraderie. Je bent uh, toch onderdeel van een, uh, een kleine selecte groep binnen Defensie die zich uh, op hele mooie plekken in de wereld in kan laten zetten. They are one of NATO's most respected assets. Een fuzileiro requer spirit sacrifício, requer dedicação e determinação. Ready to respond to any crisis, any time. I am part of something that's bigger than myself. And I take pride in the fact that I'm doing something that so few other individuals choose to do. Our protection is their defining purpose. They are the Marines of NATO.